I'm going to talk about things that you can do to reduce the damages and the hassle that you might experience after a strong hurricane. To prevent and reduce the ordeal you go through from flooding, think about what is down at a potential flood level that could be damaged. Elevate whatever you can. There are things you can do with your existing shingles to make them more wind resistant. You can get some roofing cement that you can apply wet or dry and, and put some dabs under the first course of shingles along the edge and along the gable ends. And that is the most vulnerable part of your shingle and can help to reduce a lot of damage if you do that. People are accustomed to boarding up with plywood or oriented strand board, but a much simpler and easier to install alternative to that are removable panels that are made out of a translucent lightweight polycarbonate material. You can see they're kind of corrugated, extremely lightweight, easy to install. Before the hurricane comes, just put them in place with wing nuts. So simple, just about anybody could do it, and it allows light through, so you're not living in a cave. So there's a whole range of, of prices and alternatives to provide protection from flying debris during a high wind event. As hurricane season makes us look around our homes, we should also look around our landscapes and see what needs to be done to prepare our landscapes for the hurricane season and the possibility of high winds. High on that list is checking out your trees, particularly mature shade trees in your landscape. Look for trees that have decay in their trunk or large dead areas, trees that are dead altogether or trees that have big dead branches. All of this needs to be taken care of well before a hurricane threatens our, our area. What you want to do is contact licensed arborists to evaluate the tree and recommend some work to be done on it. Make sure you use licensed arborists licensed by the Louisiana Department of Agriculture and Forestry. You can find a list of licensed arborists by parish on their website. You also want to secure loose objects in your landscape. Things like potted plants, hanging baskets, bird feeders, wind chimes, children's furniture and play areas and patio furniture as well all should be put away and secured well before the hurricane hits. And finally, look in your garage. Look at your pesticides like insecticides, fungicides, and fuel like gasoline. All of that should be in a secure location and put up high enough where it won't be hit by floodwaters. Look around your landscape now and take care of these things before a hurricane threatens. Now it's hurricane season. It is a good idea to stock up the non-perishable food items. If you have stock from last year or years ago, you may want to check and make sure they are not expired. Water is very important. Bottled water is the best option. Make sure you have one gallon water per person per day. To prepare for power outage, make sure you have plenty of ice. If the power goes out, you may want to keep the doors of your refrigerator and freezer closed as much as possible. Sometimes the power goes out for too long and the ice starts to melt. Remember, frozen food can be safely refrozen if they still have ice crystals on them or if the temperature is below 40 degrees. There are three other tools we normally forget until we need them. First one is manual can opener. So we can actually open the canned food and enjoy them. Second one is a thermometer, so you can test the temperature of your food. Last but not least, you need a bottle of bleach, so you can sanitize your utensils as well as water. We need to get ready for hurricane season and part of that preparedness is getting ready for the whole family and that includes our pets and our livestock. So the first thing we need to do is make sure our animals are healthy. Healthy animals are going to be much better prepared to handle the stress of a relocation if that becomes necessary. So it's very important that we identify our animals. If we have to get on the road and they happen to get away from us, we want to be able to find them. And so in pets, having them microchipped, Having your horses microchipped or having your livestock identified in some way is very important. We also want to prepare an emergency to-go box. You don't want to be scrambling around trying to find things when you have to uh, up and go in a, in a very hurried manner. And you want to have important things in there, um, feed, you want to have any medications or a list of medication, your contact numbers, leashes, things like that. 
uh, in that box. The next thing we want to do is make sure we have a plan for how we're going to transport our animals. We need to make sure that we have pet carriers for our pets and it's a really good idea that they know how to get into those and that they're not stressed. Um, for our livestock and our horses it's very important that we know how to load them and we also need to find out where we're going to go ahead of time. Uh, for horses we don't always have shelters available and so you're going to have to partner with other uh, producers maybe with other um, horse owners uh, for cattle, sheep and goats. We want to make sure that we plan if we're going to evacuate them where we're going to go and if we're not going to evacuate them how to shelter in place.